Okay, hello, nice to meet you everyone. Um, so we are delighted to welcome uh, Davinia Hernandez-Leo today. She is from the University uh, Pompeo Fabra of uh, Barcelona, who is part of the Utopia Alliance. And she's full professor at the Department of uh, Information and Communication Technology. Um, and she will uh, present um, uh, how the um, educational technology research uh, she is conducting um, in her research group um, is involved in reflective and collaborative dispositions for teacher professional development. So I leave you on board. I leave you the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Muriel. It's my pleasure to be part of this seminar series and to, to share eh, with you the, the work that we conduct in our research group. Usually my smile is better than this, but I just came from the dentist uh, in a uh, urgency visit and I still have some anesthesia. So, uh, I will, but I, I think you can understand how I'm vocalizing. So the um, as, as Muriel already introduced, uh, the seminar will be on learning design technologies, or this means that it's really from the perspective of supporting teachers as designers of learning activities. And in, in the way I will be presenting the ideas that connect to this concept of learning design and technologies and can support learning design, I will be insisting on collective perspectives, um, both when supporting teachers in designing for learning, but also in the um, designs that they are proposing. So also in a focus of designing for um, collective or group learning experiences um, and with ingredients of inclusive uh, education. I myself, I'm not, an, let's say, an expert of inclusive education because, the, of course, as you know, this inclusive education is multifaceted, but, um, but we are considering that element in, in, let's say, in a transversal way in, in different areas of the research that we conduct as our research group. So as, as, I, as was said, uh, my, my research group um, is uh, it's located uh, at uh, the Universidad Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona. We are uh, based in the Information and Communication uh, Technologies Department, um, the Engineering School, but the research group is really in, um, in it is really in interdisciplinary and international, as you will see in a picture in the next slide. Over here, you have some, uh, some pictures of our campus. The Poblenau campus, uh, Muriel already visited. Um, you, you can see that it's close to the uh, Gloria Tower and the, the Gloria Square. UPF is a public university in, in Catalonia. It's quite young um, when you compare to other universities in, in Catalonia and Spain. And we say it's an urban university because the three campuses of the university, they are located in the, in the center of Barcelona. Um, let's say giving a new use to, to buildings that have uh, former uses in the past. So our campus is located at, at an oil textile um, factory. And it's the whole department, because it's a young university, the, the faculty was really recruited from the beginning with an important international uh, profile. And you can see it when you look at the, at the university faculty members and also at my own research group. So this is a picture. It's not completely uh, updated at this moment in time, but you can see it's quite international, also uh, quite gender balanced and interdisciplinary. So in the you can see um, there are people with an engineering background, but we also have people with different backgrounds from psychology to business to education. And I have to say that uh, even you see him, a number of women in this uh, in this picture is, and they are most of them they are having the engineering, the ICT background, and the and the men in our group they are coming with it from the other disciplines. I always say that um, to explain that we are quite interdisciplinary, gender balance, and not necessarily like following the respective stereotypes. Now uh, going back to the. Um, to the topic of, of the talk, uh, inclusive education. As I said, inclusive education is multifaceted. Um, you know well, and and but uh, my my thought would be focused on the perspective of designing 
designing for, le for learning. And, um, and in, in this case, when teachers are designing for learners, for learning, my question, and I would like to do it kind of participatory also, eh? because it's, this is a seminar, no? not only a talk. So I'm, I'm asking you to um, type this uh, URL in your devices, can be your, your, your machines, your laptops, your mobile devices that you prefer. Um, and answer that question from your perspective and, and from the perspective of designing learning activities. What, do, what can we mean by inclusive education? So you have to type tiny.cc utopia uh, slash inclusive. Uh, is it possible, Davinia, you copy paste this in the chat so that we can copy paste it? Yeah, that's a good idea. In fact, I was planning to do so, but now. Perfect. Remember. Yes. Thank you. I can see five of you already are already online, six. <laughs> Seven, eight. Time is limited, uh, but if you need more time, I can give you more time to answer that question. And this is this will be not uh, only an individual activity, but in the next um, in an next screen, you will be able to see answers from other people participating in this short activity, and you will be able to let's say to 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 rate to what extent you agree with that uh, with that answer, and you will do some very small like collaboration option in an next screen. I still have a wait until others finished. It's... Yes, but it will be fast. It's, it's about to finish and the time allocated for uh, the individual answer. Now you have you will you are having now another screen, right? Where you you can read the answers from others and you will be able to to write. What they have said. So it's essentially your level of agreement for this activity. How are the one we have to write chosen among who's, who's been uh, um, written? Sorry? Um, I have three uh, options to write. Yes. And I guess there were more than this. So how the one? Yes. Because it's, it's a small groups. Uh, so not all of you. There are, you are uh, eight people participating, but uh, then you are now forming two groups of four. Okay. Um, and then you're reading the, the 
options from the other groups. Now I will move to the next level because you are almost done, especially in one group. And now you will be able to see the the answers from the answers and, from oh, there is an echo. I, I think the echo has disappeared. Okay. So you have to improve and the or to come to a common answer if you think that uh, it would be feasible to write a more complete answer to the question or that to an answer that incorporates all the perspective from the group So you can discuss in the in the chat, and one of you can write in the text editor. If you all I think that the version with um, higher like level of agreement already works as a common answer, then you can just use that one. It, it, it's a bit weird because we were typing and it stopped. So there is something that doesn't look like anything. And we have to say, okay, with something that doesn't look like anything or the previous submission were better. Mm -hmm. So you have to select if the previous submission works better for you or if you are happy with the commonly written answer. We, 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 um, I don't know how to put it. It's like uh, you you were beginning to do something and it stopped in the middle. So I would say we were happy with what you did. Because you, need, you needed more time, right? Yeah. You are taking it too seriously. <laughs> yeah, good. You can finish it now. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> There is a group that is almost done, as I can see. Now I see you are done, right? Okay, I will end the activity. So you have the the answers from the two groups. So um, we could have a still uh, match the two groups and you, you would have again the opportunity to, to integrate uh, um the two the two answers but i think it's okay for that uh, uh activity 
as part of this seminar. You say education, including all learners, whether they're belonging to minority groups or not. And you mentioned the example, the universal conception of learning. And this means for educators to be flexible and trained to accommodate any learning difficulties. And in the other group, you say a design which includes everyone with their capabilities and background in a purpose of learning and activities that include all learners and everyone, uh, students, parents, professors, of course, considering different stakeholder requirements, uh, different students, teacher needs, and different curriculum. Yeah, as 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 I mentioned, the, the inclusive education is a multifaceted concept. And, and there are many elements that could be considered uh, from um, um, difficulties uh, to learn to also technical aspects that have to do with accessibility and so on. So there are there are many um, many facets in in this concept. Um, and you have seen how. I mean, different uh, views, uh, there were more general views in, in some of your individual answers and other answers that were most more specific. In, in the way I will uh, be addressing the aspect I would like to discuss with you today, the, the perspectives of inclusion are essentially of facilitating equal opportunities for participation in learning activities. Um, to, in offering guidance in designing for effective learning, in uh, offering collective efforts or facilitating collective efforts for designing and sharing designs for learning so that quality resources can, can be available um, for all. Uh, also, a proposal on how to support co design, co designing for learning, co designing not only between teachers but also involving students. And also this concept of regulation of learning purposes, regulation that are um, done um, with a sufficient um, um, with sufficient um, level of detail, so to say, so that um, the needs uh, of, of learners are considered in the process of implementing learning activities. So in this case, I'm not talking only about self-regulation, but also regulation that it's the changes that are done also by the teacher when implementing and orchestrating learning activities and how technologies can support those, those processes. So I will start with the overall concept that is learning design. What do we mean with learning design? Learning design is a field of research and, and also practice in educational research and also in educational technology research. As we say that technologies can support teachers in designing for learning. Um, and it's also, of course, a domain uh, of practice uh, um, in trying to understand how teachers design for learning and how we can support those teachers uh, in their daily uh, practices. Uh, one possible definition of learning design is um, is the one that uh, you can read in the in the screen. Then learning design is about supporting teachers, understanding how teachers design, but also supporting them in designing the best possible conditions. Mm, we don't say the best conditions, but the best possible conditions. We understand there are many constraints for their students to learn. Documenting the designs and um, making the designs explicit uh, so that they can be they can be shared, uh, discussed with others, redesign, um, uh, enabling co-design by other stakeholders. You mentioned other other teachers, but also the students and the families. If we are able to make our design ideas, uh, our design ideas facilitating learning explicit, then this is. Uh, indeed, uh, a, a useful instrument to communicate with others. And there's a body of literature on this, on this concept of learning design or designing for learning. Now, what can be designed? Hmm? Um, do learning can be designed? Well, learning is actually happening in every individual. So as such, uh, it's difficult uh, to be designed. It also depends on the previous and uh, the prior knowledge and, and so on. Um, but there are different uh, elements, there are different facets of, uh, of a design of these best possible conditions for students to learn that can be designed so that this can lead 
to an emerging activity that is generating learning in, in the humans, no? in the students. There are different, several frameworks um, um, for learning design. This is the one that I'm currently uh, preferring more because it's being more useful to support my, my research. Okay. That is the ACAD framework by Lucilla Carvalho and Peter Vigier. There are already some references uh, that uh, talk about this model. And the idea is that the student activity, that is the emerging activity, the real activity, which is uh, happening really a, a learning time in, in the humans is something that is emerging, that is real. Um, for it to happen, what it can be designed are um, the things that are around the square. So of course, uh, educators, they need to consider what are the learning outcomes that they want the students to, to, to achieve um, after this, uh, their activities their, and their options. And there can be, of course, multiple in scale, scope, and kind. Then in order to achieve these actual learning outcomes, um, the, uh, what can be designed by educators are the tasks, that is how the students will deal with, with knowledge, uh, with the skills. This is about the, the, um, the design that is epistemically situated. And of course, the, the educators can also design the, the physical aspects, the tools, the artifacts, the learning spaces, and also the, the social aspects. That is, whether the activity is individual, it is being done in dias, groups, teams, roles, and so on. So the, the design facets are those related to um, uh, epistemic, uh, social, aspects and also physical aspects, and of course, the, spe the, spe the expected learning outcomes. So these are the aspects that uh, can be designed. And there are, of course, elements that have to do with in inclusive education that could be connected to all, all of those um, facets that can be designed. Uh, elements that can be considered in the physical space, the tools, the resources, the learning uh, spaces, uh, how um, students will have to deal with uh, with knowledge in the task and also in the in the social uh, space. So this is this framework can be also very useful in resonating about inclusive uh, design elements. Now, I will talk about one particular case of uh, when we talk about designing for learning. Of course, there are multiple pedagogical approaches, and one possible pedagogical approach um, is uh, collaborative learning, which is a non trivial uh, uh, learning scenario that is present in many pedagogies as well, um, where uh, inclusive education has also um, presents several challenges. Uh, um, the more fundamental challenge is about uh, offering equal opportunities for participation, as in general, not even um, more if we talk about learning difficulties. What we have been doing in the group is more in, in general equal opportunities for participation, but we don't have got into details for specific uh, learning needs that could be even, you know, uh, important in future research for us. But uh, in collaborative learning, or from the perspective of our research group on learning technologies, computer-supported collaborative learning is, is somewhere a scope for research, both from the perspective of designing for learning and the implementation of the learning activities uh, in the classroom or at distance and so on. Now, um, how to design for effective or fruitful computer-supported collaborative learning? Collaborative learning, as you know, is about the role of social interaction, triggering learning mechanisms. So we say that learning, that social interaction, especially if they are knowledge intensive interactions, they can lead to fruitful learning. And computer can support, can mediate these interactions and uh, different types of software, multiple devices can facilitate these interactions. And we are more and more used to those kind of technologies supporting social interactions. But um, as you also know, and many of you have experience or also knowing you are implementing strategies for effective collaborative learning in your, in, your own, in your own practice, what we know is that genuine collaboration for fruitful learning, this requires systematic efforts to learn together. Um, this is especially 
clear when the members participating in a collaborative learning activity, they have, uh, let's say, limited skills in terms of, 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 team, of working and learning in, in teams. We know that free collaboration does not necessarily lead to free for learning. It can happen, uh, but in general, this is this is not the case. Um, learners uh, should be engaged in processes involving social knowledge intensive interactions. So when we talk about the designing for collaborative learning, we need to consider um, this, this, uh, this challenge in collaborative learning, what makes the, uh, the offering of equal uh, opportunities for participation essential so that everybody has the same chances to interact with others and to um, take some learning profit about uh, these social interactions leading to effective learning. So one approach to enhance effective uh, collaboration is to guide, to structure the collaboration in a way that the probability of reaching this uh, learning, the successful learning situations increases. Um, this is uh, what in computer supportive collaborative learning in CICL we call macro scripting, uh, which is this um, pedagogical methods that a structure the collaborative learning flow to trigger potentially effective social interaction. So this is when we propose activity sequences with um, certain kinds of, of uh, group formation, let's say skins or policies or sizes, um, the allocation of resources, sometimes distributing resources, resources and distributing roles so that the collaboration happens in a, the desired uh, way um, or considering the pedagogical intent of the educator that is proposing this kind of collaborative learning activities. So really, these macro scripts, these ways of structuring collaboration in a way are fostering, are enabling a kind of um, ways of participation that are equal and, and therefore uh, inclusive, at least to an extent. This is, um, in, in this slide, you can see uh, several schemas of uh, what we call collaborative learning flow patterns with our um, abstractions, generalizations of the of macro scripts for collaborative learning or these effective structures leading to, to fruitful learning in terms of social interaction. And you may be familiar with Jigsaw, which is the, the probably known uh, pattern to structure collaborative learning. Um, and th there are other things per share, tabs, brainstorming, simulation, or the pyramid uh, pattern. You have experienced the pyramid pattern in the, in the previous activity, uh, if you have noticed. In the pyramid pattern, um, when I was asking you what is for you, uh, inclusive education from a perspective of designing for learning, everybody uh, participating in this seminar had the opportunity to reflect about their prior knowledge, to uh, verbalize, in this case, to type no? the answer to the question the, in an individual way. And then all of you have the opportunity to read the answers from others and to work together into integrating this previous knowledge into an, an, a single, let's say, common answer. And this pattern that is very simple has a very important benefits in terms of learning and, and offering uh, equal participations because everybody, not only let's say uh, people that is more eager to volunteer or, or speak aloud or to participate like openly has this chance uh, to, to participate. Um, also, and by doing so, uh, we know that uh, retrieving um, the, the previous knowledge, verbalizing that are very effective ways uh, for, for learning. And also reading what the others think and not only, not only as a self of the participants is also a very um, uh, effective way of identifying uh, different um, views on a topic, identifying knowledge gaps, uh, possible conflicts uh, in understanding a certain topic and so on. And, and of course, these possibilities of knowledge building depending on the, on the topic. And this is only the, for the pyramid that can have, of course, 
uh, different kinds of configurations in terms of group sizes, group formations, levels in the pyramid, and so on. And this is especially suitable for large, uh, for large groups when you need really like these opportunities for um, everybody to participate at, at the scale, no? for example, if you're having large classes. And as the, and then I will talk later how the teacher can also monitor and, and, and activate on the, on the fly, like modifications if needed. So then the, this is a pattern, the pyramid pattern, but there are other possible patterns such as uh, you see in this slide, the jigsaw. The jigsaw, as I said, is the more broadly uh, known uh, collaborative learning flow pattern. In the jigsaw, the idea is that there is a task or a problem that can be divided into several problems and then individual people are associated with one particular piece of the task or the problem. They get the opportunity to solve, uh, to answer that particular piece of the task, they group, uh, they, they, they mix in, in expert groups and they solve the piece of the task together and then they go back to jigsaw groups where each member has been working in a different part of the task or the problem so that they all collaborate to solve a more ambitious uh, problem or task that really requires the integration of the previous answers to the to the other tasks or problems and this is facilitating uh, participation because of course there is some positive interdependence and inter individual accountability happening especially in the last phase of the jigsaw in the phase where there are different mem members from the expert groups joining together um, having to answer uh, like an ambitious problem together knowing only each of them a piece, uh, a part of the answer. So they all feel that the group will succeed only if they participate. This would be individual accountability and everybody in the groups knows that they need the others because they can only, they are only have part of the information and required to solve the whole task. So, and, and, and this pattern has been used uh, even in the origins uh, when, um, it was proposed as a pattern in educational research and it has the, the, the audience in inclusive education, um, in education with immigrants and, and, and so on, so that they were implementing the YICSO activities so that everybody had this feeling that they were important, that they could contribute to solving uh, the tasks and the others were needed then, they were needed the others in order to be able to solve these tasks. So these are two examples uh, of structures facilitating uh, participation and towards fruitful learning um, in which we have been uh, working a lot for, for several years now. Um, one of the things that we have been doing is trying to um, implement these uh, patterns as uh, to formulate these techniques, uh, these um, um, as patterns and then as templates that could guide teachers in learning design tools in authoring tools into learning how to apply the patterns, how to create uh, activities that are based on those on those patterns. So we have a collage and with collage, which is an, an authoring tool that is um, very helpful to get familiar with the patterns and to, to build some uh, activities that are documented that are shareable, that can be used for co-design purposes um, because they are authored and all the details are um, documented through this, uh, through this type of tools. So this is the, the web collage, uh, the web collage where all uh, the patterns that I uh, showed in the previous slide are implemented as templates. And in this screen, you can also see that they can be, uh, they can be connected. Uh, you can combine one pattern with another. For example, in a, in a pyramid pattern, you can or, uh, organize the last activity or the first activity in the pyramid as a kick, so and so on. Now, um, the, we, we have been working more on the use of the pattern, so using other uh, authoring metaphors, so to say. Um, and this is an schema and a screenshot of the authoring tool of Pyramid App. Pyramid App is the tool that you have used as, let's say, learners, just as a, a toy activity for you to experience um, the flow. And it's uh, the, the, 
the easiest flow that you could implement with Pyramid App because it's only having two levels. So you have an option submission phase. We say option yeah, and not only an answer because many times our tool is being used for metacognitive activities. So for example, in large classes to um, propose the students to submit an answer about the, the content that has been discussed in the class that day so that everybody is submitting an, an answer, a, a question to the teacher. No, But they are agreeing on what is the more um, relevant question or the more interesting question so that it can be actually answered by the, by the teacher in the class because there is limited time and the teacher can also see later after the class the, the whole list of questions that have been proposed by the students so that the teacher can use it in follow-up uh, sessions with the, with the students or send asynchronous comments to them. So they, in the initial level, they can submit um, individual options and then there are small groups um, that are merging the students to rate and discuss and then the groups are merging together in upper levels of the pyramid until potentially the whole class is one single group and the the way in which the pyramid activities is being uh, proposed to the students is up to the creativity of the teacher um, there are more options for uh, authoring in the web collage tool, but in the pyramid app, because it's more um, conceived for a kind of classroom response uh, approach, including collaboration features, the time perspective is very important. Uh, as you know, time is very important for learning, but it's also very challenging, especially from an inclusive education perspective, um, also because time is limited now in the classroom. So here in the authoring space, you can see there are different uh, aspects that can be configured in our tool from, of course, the task, the mode for students to log in, uh, whether they are using their names or they are using IDs or they are using uh, an, an anonymous mode for, uh, for login. And I will talk more about the anonymous mode later because, of course, it also can connect with inclusive, uh, with inclusion uh, aspects. And the number of students that you're expecting, and then there's the configuration of the number of levels for the pyramid, the number of students per group. And then you also see the, the whether social awareness features are uh, allowed, um, the time settings, and then you also see alert settings. And this is for the dashboard of the teacher that is monitoring and can make uh, changes on the fly about the, the activity as I will. Uh, show you later, and this is why, I, uh, how I was also modifying the time of the activity that you experienced previously. So this is the pyramid uh, app uh, tool um, that is implementing this uh, pyramid collaborative learning flow pattern that is very useful to at least uh, offer the opportunity to everybody, even in large uh, cl uh, classrooms um, online or face to or, or in person classrooms to participate. Now, just uh, to share with you, we have other uh, tools supporting uh, learning design, authoring, uh, authoring tools. This is um, another tool. That, this is more oriented towards blended, uh, blended learning. Um, and because it's considering the, the spaces, so you see in the, um, and that there are two lines, uh, that represent what is happening in the school, what is happening at home, and you can add the spaces in a timeline and allocate and describe the activities that the students will have to complete uh, in the different spaces uh, where they are learning. And one of the things that we were exploring in this particular tool is the use of uh, statistics you see here. So the teachers are um, receiving kind of indicators about the, the designs that they are creating, whether there are, for example, a, an important percentage of the activities happening outside the classroom and only limited in the classroom and the other way around so that they can have an idea of the, of the decisions that they are taking uh, in, their, in their design. This is, uh, these are examples about supporting offering, supporting design for, for learning. Then we have been interested for many years also now on how to support teacher communities. So community efforts to designing for, for free for learning or to designing for learning and by sharing with others, by building on previous design ideas, then the teachers can get more 
more confident, feel more competent, and also achieve uh, together better learning designs. So this um, we have uh, we, we we have been working on technology supporting those type of technology of, of communities. Uh, we have a version of LDJ that we extended uh, years ago into ILDE because uh, ILDE is, um, stands for Integrated Learning Design Environment. The idea is that it's a community environment for teachers where there are multiple um, design uh, learning design tools, uh, multiple authoring tools that they can choose and select to. Uh, experience um, how they can build different types of activities depending on their needs or the pedagogical approach that they would like to foster. Um, and, and this is the, the integrated infrastructure that we have been seeing, like, especially useful in teacher training uh, as scenarios in both pre-service and in, and in service professional learning. Uh, opportunities because by using these tools they get to learn also the the pedagogical techniques um and then with we have seen for um promoting like facilitating like more kind of adoption has been working on um, like specialized teacher communities that are associated to particular could be transversal uh, topics or transversal uh, pedagogies, no? So for example, in Catalonia, we have built a uh, building for the government here for the Catalan um, Education Department. This platform is the Marion. This is a community platform for teachers to, to, to design and share um, high quality resources about uh, activities supporting STEM uh, education. And this is open for um, several stakeholders, of course, not only educators, parents can also have access to, to those resources, but also uh, different agents coming from different science uh, and science education entities for, from museums to research centers can also offer the resources and offer activities for the entire educational community. And this is about Estemarium. Then you also have in the slide the tips. So this is a, a, a platform in this case, in this case created um, as part of, uh, of an Erasmus uh, plus um, uh, strategic partnership about, and this is about how to promote design thinking in primary in primary school. So this is guiding the teachers in uh, authoring process in a design process where teachers can uh, get to learn this particular methodology, design thinking, and reflect on how they can introduce it in the, in the activities, in the projects that mm -hmm. they conduct with their, with their students. This is another example of a teacher community that is aiming at this collective uh, improvement of, of education in this case, uh, from the perspective of promoting um, environmental awareness. So this is about exploring, finding, co-designing, <laughs> and sharing learning activities that consider what we call uh, the green digital competencies. And, and this is also an effort done in an Erasmus Plus project where the there is the, the, the idea of using internet of the thin, the thin sensors that can be located in plants in different learning spaces, such as the classroom, and where a, a students can um, can see the, the the measurements from the from the sensors in, in the displays or in a, in a dashboard that we have developed and the teachers are creating uh, designing very creative activities that are using that technology so that this uh, this um, uh, environmental awareness let's say competencies can be can be promoted more examples and uh, this is um this is another teacher community uh, platform. In this case, um, the focus is on, on assessment. And this is augmented assessment uh, project in this case. Here, the, the idea or the types of designs that are being created by, by educators are augmented reality uh, activities, essentially connected with uh, maths. And the idea is that this kind of activities uh, can facilitate language barriers uh, with migrant uh, students 
when um, the assessment of previous knowledge, also the training of of of, uh, of further uh, content is is get, is get done through this uh, augmented reality like approaches. And there is uh, there are a number of of uh, resources about assessment with augmented uh, reality uh, already available in this uh, in this community platform. Another example um, is the Blendy platform. Uh, this is about um, Blendy for inclusion. So this is about how to consider the use of uh, of tools to, I mean, software tools of different kinds, learning tools of different kinds, to um, to be integrated into schools so that they attend the, the, the students' diverse needs. So over here, this project was really about inclusion, considering multiple facets. And if you go to the, um, to the link that you can see in the slides, you will be able to see um, in the first uh, box, uh, when it say tool and, and tips, if you click on top of it, you will be able to, to see a list of, uh, of tools, uh, of software tools supporting uh, learning and with recommendations on how to use it, how to integrate into your learning so that it's really uh, achieving inclusion in the way that you are proposing uh, blended learning activities. In, 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 in the project, in this project, in addition to providing this the community platform, we created a very simple authoring tool that um, that is enabling uh, co-design with the students. Uh, so the inclusion was only and was also seek in in, so in this in this project not only in the way that teachers were considering the inclusion of the tools, but also by considering the the, the comments of the students in the lesson plans they were designing, teachers were designing for them. So let me show you some screenshots of this uh, of this platform. So in here, this is the main uh, page where um, educators can check the, the tools and tips uh, for uh, using blended learning in schools, attending a students' diverse needs. As I said, the collaborative lesson plans, meaning that the, uh, um, educators can uh, get comments from different actors, including, including students, about their, their lesson plans. And then the students feed that app, which is a tool for the students where they don't need to log in as they are minors, but uh, using a specific code, they will be able to see the lesson plans proposed by, by educators, and they will be able to say their opinion about different uh, elements of their lesson plan so that these comments can be considered by the teacher in finalizing the designs. So this is a screenshot of the community environment, so where Teachers are creating these signs um, in different countries and the, um, in several schools. And um, in these designs, uh, are later or in while creating these designs. And over here, you have a, an example by a colleague in Cyprus. I I think we are all refugees. Where the this uh, this professor, this teacher of English is um, proposing the learning objectives, the activities, and so on. But then there is this discussed learning objectives uh, buttons that she can activate so that uh, their students uh, can comment on the learning objectives and so on, and in the proposed activities and in the tools proposed and, and, and so on. In, in, and that, all that in the process of creating the learning design until the, the teacher is finalizing the the design of the of the lesson plan. So this is the, these are the main concepts of of the Blendy tool, uh, authoring tool that is enabling co-design with the students, co-design with minors uh, as part of a community platform supporting blended learning for for inclusion. Um, now. Um, regarding supporting teachers in designing for learning, we have been recently. Um, and also in all aspects of our work, um, we have we are more and more uh, concerned about the ethical uh, aspects of um, the impact of technology in society uh, in general. And of course, more recently because of artificial intelligence, but not only. 
Um, we have been researching also these well-being impacts of educational technologies from the perspective of educators when using our, our tools, our own tools, our community platforms, the offering tools. Um, this is just a screenshot where we see that really they the tools teachers use in in their you know as part of their tasks do have an impact uh, as we see uh, in the answers uh, in, in their answers now in our research in many aspects of their of their lives so to say and could have also impact in their like, districts you now in the society in general um after you know the the overview of of impacts we are more interested in understanding how these kind of technologies can have an impact in their perception of competence, of um, autonomy, and in other aspects that could be related, for example, with frustration and so on. But we are working on that, and we are not having, uh, um, let's say, definitive results uh, yet. I want to share with you now another another topic that, of course, builds in the previous one, but uh, moves into integrating a new a new notion that is the notion of learning analytics. But I don't know. Before that, this is supposed to be a to be a seminar with some participation. I don't know if there is any comment or question so far before I move to a, another topic. No, all good. Can also drink some water. So, 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 sorry, I, I turned, I was talking with my um, phone now. Uh, for me, I, I do already have a lot of questions, but um, it also, I'm so astonished by all uh, we can learn, but yeah, maybe it's nice. I don't know how many of us do have questions, but maybe it's nice to have a a bit of a pause so because it's a really dense uh um lots of information you are giving to us right now yeah i know um <laughs> and it will be more in the next slide so this is why i'm like kind of pausing now because you know this is a long seminar eh? two hours i'm not used to that long seminars especially for online formats but uh yeah um so maybe um maybe we can do a few questions now and then you can keep on if there is not too many questions is that that would be fine for you Davina? yes yes okay um do i begin or is there any other questions from the audience si vous avez des questions même en français même si vous n'êtes pas sûr d'avoir tout compris n'hésitez pas vous pouvez aussi les écrire et je peux essayer de traduire I would like to ask also, but yeah, you can go first. Okay, go, go, please. Yeah, uh, thank you for um, showing your work. It was really nice to see all these digital platforms that you have developed. They're really nice. But something came across my mind and that is we think that we have to teach students how to collaborate in, a, um, in an inclusive way, to be open, to consider different perspectives, to value different uh, uh, opinions, or you think that maybe they already have that kind of skills? Or is it depending on the culture, on the country, on their previous background? What's your opinion about that? I, you, your, your comment is on the, on the teacher side, no? Yeah, or... the teachers and students. So you presented the platform that allows students collaboration and teachers collaboration and do we need to teach them how to collaborate in the best way is it a skill that they have to acquire or is it something mm -hmm. that's natural yeah sure and this is why um these techniques are, are, are have also you know a role so the the i said free collaboration does not necessarily lead to free through learning when it leads to more fruitful learning is when uh, the 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 members, no, the people, the individuals part collaborating are already skilled uh, people in terms of how they need to to collaborate. However, um, um you know, uh, collaborating it's also a, a process. Now you have to learn how to collaborate in a in a fruitful way, 
and in a respectful way and all these things. So this, this, uh, this learning process can be also facilitated by these kind of methods and, and technologies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is the same for, for educators. Eh? Educators are not that used to collaborate, but the more and more society is requiring, is requesting educators to work in teams uh, and when planning their, uh, their activities, but also when implementing them with their students so that more integrative uh, education happens so that more transversal or integrated projects are proposed to the students and so on. And they are not used to this uh, and they have to learn how to design together. And this of course have implications depending on culture, uh, systemic um, incentives, no? and, and so on. So the, you know, and it's it's, uh, it's indeed a complex, um, um, yeah, complex uh, phenomena mm -hmm. because it's involving humans and their behavior and so on. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. I agree to uh, with your opinion on that. Yeah. Um. Well, I discovered the. Uh, uh, well, as the other probably don't know, I'm. Uh, uh, I discovered uh, Davinia with the platform Vendi. Um, and now I'm discovering you have uh, many others, uh, including some like D tips. And I was wondering um, do you uh, kind of um, have a, a general framework that um, you think is? Uh, scalable or something or or do you think that we need to have one platform for one type of uh, uh, collaboration depending on if it's the primary school secondary school um, um, do, do you seem that uh, I, I didn't expect you to have so many models and so I uh, yeah <laughs> This is a very good question, Muriel. Um, thank you. Um, in fact, this has been our own evolution, and I don't know how we will evolve in the future because we started with, uh, you know, the Inle platform, which is an integrated learning design environment, where our idea was to have uh, all the tools. Um, we we had uh, a number of tools uh, years ago. It's still uh, like is the the tool that we use for demos and so on because there are several, the tools are there. Uh, integrated not only our own tools but also learning design tools that have been proposed by other um, research uh, groups uh, in Europe and Australia because we have had common projects in the past and the idea was that um, educator researchers no and, and as I said also preservative students or, the, or in professional development options they could go there and explore the authoring options some that are more general some that are more specific to, to specific pedagogies or topics and they could explore and learn and, and decide what is relevant for them to use however um it um it, I, we, we still, as I said, we still use it and it can, it can be useful in some scenarios, but to promote um, adoption is not the best approach because it can get very complex uh, um, for educators to understand why, how many tools. And so we, we started like simplifying, so making simple and simple the community platforms and just to the point. Uh, considering the interests of that particular community. So we are now interested in understanding their motivations, the, what could be their incentives in terms of, you know, the features of the tool, what can be more especially useful for them. And we are seeing that there are some commonalities uh, across communities, but there are also differences. And, and this is why we are exploring now, like different communities that are specific to either uh, types of education or topics for education such as system or um, and we are working also with another organization on, on a platform for um, educational activities towards uh, achieving like competencies that could contribute to social justice and so on because um, and, and then others that are more about the methodology so design thinking also so the more we simplify and we narrow the scope the easier is for the actual users to learn how to use that then and then adopt. 
but then we have, let's say, a family of tools. Um, and at a point in the future, I imagine that we may end up going to, to an integrated version once we will have learned uh, and what are exactly the configurations and the features of this platform that make it uh, um, more suitable for their adoption and also considering the evolution of education and the society in general. Right now, it's, it's not easy for educators to find the time to use this kind of platforms to contribute projects. There are also constraints beyond that, also about the willingness of the people to actually share. Um, we are also working with the schools, and they, work, they have their own, let's like, say, internal community platform that is not public to the people outside because they don't think their resources are of enough quality. So we are right now more interested in understanding what is happening in a specific communities towards trying to imagine how it will be the future of these types of communities and these types of, of learning design like uh, tools and offering approaches. And, and are, are you, you, you are working with schools, but uh, um, are you studying the effects of, of the platform on the teachers themselves? Uh, yes, um, as I said, uh, we are interested not only in understanding the, um, the how the level the tools are used. This is one thing. So we look at behavior, but we are also trying to understand uh, impact indicators that relate to the well-being. So we're using this self-determination theory where um, that is providing us a theoretical approach, but also instruments that have been proposed by the research community on how to measure elements about, as I mentioned before, the feeling of being competent, the being the feeling of being autonomous when they design for learning and the reuse designs created by others and so on. So we are in the process of trying to understand the impact also from that uh, perspective. Um, and, and not only to understand the impact, but also to, to, to understand, to see how we should evolve these tools so that they um, can offer um, better, you know, um, better options for the teachers to be not only more efficient and effective in their uh, um, in their tasks, uh, but also feel um, good that they are not, uh, you know, we are also studying, for example, the the kind of the load uh, that is imposed to teachers and so on. So, so yes, uh, and as I said, we don't have definitive answers. We are exploring those research questions with our uh, family of tools, depending on the research opportunities and scenarios that we have. You know, it's not easy when you are working with real teachers and real educational scenarios, but this is, uh, you know, what we are, um, our research interests, one of our research lines. Mm. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, is there any other question? Okay, I guess uh, not. So maybe we. I can continue. Yeah, maybe you can continue. Thanks for that detail. Yeah. Those were questions. <laughs> it was nice to have this break, and then we'll continue talking about the role of learning analytics to support learning design. So we mentioned learning, the concept of learning design, how technologies can support learning design, and exa several examples that we are proposing from our Thai research group at UPF in Barcelona, but there, there, there can be, of course, other, other approaches. But we, we are exploring that from community platforms where teachers can co-design and share and reuse and, and build on top of other ideas and also authoring tools that are guiding teachers in designing for effective learning. Um, le learning analytics is a concept that the and a field now of research having in some conference and journal and so on. So in learning technology research is really uh, a relevant uh, line of research. So analytics about uh, es learn learners data essentially. Um, the concept of learning analytics, um, the main definition that is broadly accepted by the community is this, uh, the measurement, collection, analysis, and reporting of data about learners and their context for purposes of understanding and optimizing learning and the environments in which it occurs. 
So this is uh, about data about the learners and their context. In our research, because we are interested in teacher community platforms and, and learning design tools, for us, what interested to broaden the scope of this concept of learning analytics. Um, and we are working on learning analytics, but we say data analytics more in general because we are also interested in teacher data. Um, and therefore, we have been like adopting the concepts from social uh, learning analytics, community analytics, um, and visualizations, so including social network analysis and other techniques to um, try to understand how those kind of data analytics can offer more opportunities to support educators when designing for learning. And this is how we have been approaching that. We uh, propose a, a framework together with some colleagues um, that is called the Analytics Layers for Learning Design Framework. Um, and the idea is that we consider uh, community data, that is the community of practitioners and related stakeholders, so that we understand how they are the options in the community platform and what is, you know, how, how is the, the patterns of their design activity so that we can see, um, so that this data can be used for um, self-awareness about how they design or social awareness about what others are doing in the community and maybe, you know, I can get inspired about what others are doing and so on. Design analytics is another layer in, in this framework. This design analytics has to do with data about the, the pedagogical intent, the pedagogical decisions that are reflected in the learning designs. So we said learning design is about documenting the design ideas, the pedagogical intent, so the tasks, the um, that is the epistemics uh, said, but also the, the other dimensions of the social and the physical and so on. So all these design decisions are represented into, into a learning design and therefore there are some indicators, some measurements, some design analytics that can be extracted from the, the knowledge, the, the, the ideas that are in the, in the learning designs. And then, of course, there is the layer of the learning analytics, that is the metrics about the learner's engagement, achievement, and this is aligned with the design. So this is the, the data about the learner's experience in the learning design, the, the, let's say the, the orthodox definition of learning analytics. And we have been exploring these different layers, and of course, also the interplays, the interconnections between the layers or the interactions between the layers. So for example, design analytics can offer a framework for interpreting learning analytics and learning analytics can be aligned with the design intent for further design interactions that would be the redesign or design analytics can contribute to community analytics um, and uh, the community analytics can be aligned with design properties. And so all this together, this design and uh, these different types of data analytics together can offer pointers for inspiration during a design process. So if we say how different um, educators in, in a community or a subgroup of educators in a community are designing, for example, types of activities that are common in their pedagogical intent or in the pedagogical designs in terms of methodology or so on. So this interplays, uh, these interactions between layers have been also very relevant to us in uh, exploring these opportunities of data analytics when um, integrated in these community tools, learning design, authoring tools to offer further opportunities um, in improving how we support educators when designing for learning. Here you have some examples, and these examples um, come from the integrated learning design environment, where there are multiple tools and, and multiple people using different tools to create a learning design, following different pedagogies, and um, and and so on. So that you can see, like very basic uh, community analytics about how designs are being reused from others explored for others, the, the designs that are created from scratch and, and, and so on, so that you can have an idea of the overall, what is happening overall in the, in the platform. And all the visualizations are clickable so that you can go to the list of designs clicking on top of the, of the different elements visualized. In, you also see in the screen 
um, the um, the list of tools and to what extent these tools have been used by the community. So the number of people or the relative number of people that is using the dream, learning, and play, the persona card, the pyramid or the web collage. Uh, so that you can explore the community by, by tool. You can also see the, the tree of how the different designs have been duplicated and reused by others by adapting those designs to their own context. So these are, let's say, community analytics that can offer different ways for the for the um, uh, community participants to grow, to understand the community so that they can uh, help them in or trigger orientation and inspiration where uh, exploring uh, the community. These are analytics for learning design. In terms of, of, of analytics, um, of design analytics in this case, you remember I mentioned at Crumble, which was the authoring tool supporting like explicit um, um, blended learning, design for blended learning. And over here, what we do is to collect, um, um, let's say a lot of data of all the different options in the tool that uh, can be mapped to construct of pedagogical intentions of the teacher. So whether the activities are of certain type according to a taxonomy in terms of learning objectives or whether the activities are that in a specific location or in another location of the type of assessment that is proposed for a particular task. And all this data is uh, design data that is characterizing the design is later shown in, in, in a, with uh, as a statistics using a specific visualizations. And it is supporting an individual educator to um, be able to make decisions about the activities that need to go next, for example, or to revise the design, or uh, the, if the statistics are merged by other designs with other designs in the platform, then the statistics would be merged. And you can see, for example, for students, in a group of courses in total, you know, what is the workload beyond what is proposed to be done in the school. So also aggregated data analytics across different designs is uh, facilitated with this tool. I also in Ed Cramble, uh, collaborating with uh, colleagues in the University in Pittsburgh in this case, we integrated also the, um, uh, what they propose as a smart learning content. So the, these are uh, the same idea that we have for data analytics, but also in terms of how the content is considered across a sequence of activities. Uh, in this case, what we were able is, was to show for programming activities, uh, software programming, software coding activities, so how the different concepts of programming were considered across time in several activities by, by the professor to the students so that they can see how, you know, what is the, the, uh, the distribution of the different concepts across the, across the different activities and tasks so that they can balance better uh, the, uh, how the students are covering uh, all are practicing all the concepts and so on also across time. And of course, we were doing like uh, like evaluation of, of the impact. No, it was also the, the question by Muriel in this case. Um, we we try to see uh, you know the impact on the cognitive flows of the teachers when using the tool in comparison also to the quality of the resulting learning designs. And we are seeing in our studies that these design analytics features are allowing the teachers to reduce their cognitive load especially in terms of mental demand for that is easier to design by you know, having these analytics about their accumulated these change choices mm, um, and facilities this choice of the most appropriate activities without affecting the overall design time. So what we saw is that we are not reducing the time by using this uh, data analytics supports, but we are decreasing the cognitive load and we are improving the overall quality of the design. So at the end, the designs were better, um, the, the teachers had less uh, load and also the results in terms of quality, they were having less uh, design errors than those cases that were using the same tool, but without the data visualizations. 
Now, so we mentioned the community analytics, the design analytics, and now we mentioned the, the learning analytics. Um, and in terms of learning analytics, uh, of course, what we have tried to see is how the, the data about learners, and so on, the, the, the behaviors, the outcomes, and so on, can be aligned with the learning design so that we can see to what extent the pedagogical intent is actually achieved in, in the emerging like learning activity of the students and, and, their, and their outcomes no? and the learning outcomes. So we have been implemented like teacher-led inquiry, inquiry scenarios where teachers were not only um, doing like planning a learning design, but also planning the data that they will be collecting about their students' uh, behavior and learning. And through uh, specific features in our technology, we were facilitating educators to, let's say, document this data and then analyze the alignment of the, the learning analytics with the learning design so that they could use these to reflect individually or in, as collective, uh, you know, inquiry efforts, for example, in the schools, um, to what extent the designs that were suitable enough to, to meet their objectives so that they can also redesign and so on. Mm -hmm. So um, you see, we have been working on teacher-led inquiry at the individual level, but also collective inquiry and community uh, uh, teacher-led inquiry, for example, with the schools that are trying to understand how a particular pedagogy can uh, affect the, the proposals uh, or the, the overall like uh, education project for a school if there are multiple professors like following the same approach. So this was about um, learning I mean, data analytics in general, uh, including learning analytics, but also design analytics and community analytics can be used uh, to support um, educators when designing for uh, productive learning, so to say. Um, and now, I can sang its slides also about the side of implementing the designs. As you know, this is all not uh, about uh, designing what is happening before, um, before the our sessions with the students or our students conducting our activities, even if we are not present, but uh, also the enactment of the learning designs uh, by the students can be very challenging, and technology can also support that. And this um, implementation needs to be as much as possible, like considering the learning design, no? so that all let's say make make sense. Um, we have been working on this notion of orchestration, which is uh, also in the learning technologies field, especially in CCL, um, like um, accepted uh, nowadays, the concept of classroom orchestration or orchestration of learning design, because it's more than implementation, but it's really, um, it's more than implementation or enactment of the learning design. It's really about monitoring what is happening but how the students are actually using the, you know, are actually like uh, behaving when we are proposing a lot of activities and we may need to make modifications on the fly, no? And especially in those circumstances where um, levels of inclusion are needed. So it's about flexibility and several of you said in the initial task. So this notion of orchestration is about the real-time coordination of collaborative learning processes at different social levels, no? in the individual, the small groups, and the whole class, using a variety of resources and tools in a synergic way to maintain the progress toward learning outcomes. And there are several authors, especially in the in the CICL community, that would uh, that were contributing, let's say, to that uh, to that definition. And then and the orchestration is usually done by teachers, but there, there can be orchestration with the students and, and so on. But it's essentially like the educator, the responsible of how this real-time coordination of what is happening or what the students are doing and how it needs to be uh, organized, especially when we talk about school education or formal education. Now, um, this concept of orchestration lead to the idea of being able to um, and to monitor, understand what the students are doing, if they are struggling, and to regulate 
uh, when needed, um, make modifications um, uh, when needed. And then the consensus is how technology support. Uh, we say yes, and we have this example. We have played a lot in terms of research, different research questions with the pyramid tool, because even if it's a, um, let's say it's a sufficiently, let's say, agile tool, um, but it can be very, you know, it's also non-trivial uh, tool because it's allowing collaborative learning at the scale and so on. So we have been studying different challenges that have to do with orchestration with this particular tool that you experience. So there is the design, there is the enactment, but it's also the orchestration in the classroom or at a distance. Um, so this is the, the pyramid app. We have been using it in many different contexts from several years ago. Uh, for example, this is recent, um, we use it with, um, with MOOCs at the time that MOOCs were, were so popular, no? Um, because they really a scale uh, um, collaboration and social interaction at the scale was a challenge uh, in terms of MOOCs. Um, this is one case no, in which we have been like using uh, different versions of the pyramid, uh, not exactly the one that you experienced today. I will mention more about this later. And also embedded, for example, in social media or simulations of social media where students are and learning about digital and site processions skills that, um, about, you know, raising in social media. So this is just to mention different, you know, contexts in which we have been uh, exploring the use of, of Pyramid App and, and how Pyramid App was covering one possible level of interaction, of social interaction to other uh, tools that were proposed, for example, in this case, or in the case of, of MOOCs. Uh, and we were representing that in a social learning space grid. But anyway, I want to move to, to more this idea of flexibility on how uh, in, when we are orchestrating uh, activities that need to consider the needs, no? need to provide like equal participations but, uh, and then be flexible and, and so on. So how this flexibility can be provided? Um, because we have this... Um, this aim on trying to understand the challenges at the scale when you have a large number of students, then uh, we have this kind of, um, I don't know, a framework or distribution of ideas that you see here, like um, uh, activities at the scale, uh, for example, uh, a small scale, for example, those in the, in the classroom, and activities also at the large scale, for example, in distant learning context. And we have been exploring like different features, like different uh, tools that are more human in control. So the, the, the educator in this case, making all the modifications about the learning situation as I was doing for you today through using dashboards. And also where the machine can be in control using adaptive, let's say, behavior mechanisms. I wouldn't talk today about the, the matching, the matching in control, adaptive groups through predictions, elasticity and dynamism through using agents. <laughs> Nowadays we have the chat GPT, which is very, you know, very hot topic. An adaptive group using predictions. This is more when the you know, matching is in control, like making the decisions about the level of flexibility to be offered. We've seen that in large scale context um, can be very useful, but it's not really helping much in a small, a small scale CSCL activities where uh, the, the, what is desirable is that the human is in control. But still, the technology can offer some guidance to the human uh, when supporting the decision making. So I, I wouldn't uh, go into details on how the machine can help, you know, in a more, let's say, uh, machine in control way, but there are some explorations of what we have been trying to, to study in the past. And I will focus only now on the orchestration dashboards, um, which is these tools, again, for teachers. <laughs> Remember the emphasis of uh, our work in terms of supporting teachers, supporting educators with um, um, a layer of information that is, um, trying to facilitate then their understanding of what is happening in, in collaborative learning activities. And we have been exploring different types of dashboards, monitoring dashboards that are also actionable. The modifications to the activities can be done through the dashboard. 
And then there are these mirroring um, and dashboard that are only presenting the information to the teacher and other, let's say, more sophisticated uh, dashboards that are also offering uh, alerts, highlighting critical moments, but also advising the uh, the educator about with recommendations about what uh, could be do uh, could be done uh, next. Uh, but then the human has the last uh, word on whether considering that recommendation or not. So we have been studying teachers' ability to add, uh, considering the information provided into these different kinds of dashboards and trying to understand what can be more more useful. So how this mirroring and guiding supports influence the orchestration actions of the teachers. This is a version of our of our dashboard, very similar to the version I use today, but it's, uh, yeah, we're advancing it, um, you know, only whenever we can, if not all the time with the, you know, the, the alerts and the recommendations, please increase time and so on. It can be also socially like communicated to the teacher as you did today, huh? the more time is needed. And our research is what it said is that, and we are measuring the orchestration load. So how this is for the teacher, you know, in terms of the load, the effort that the educator need to put into uh, really orchestrating this type of uh, technology mediated activities. We've seen that the guiding condition um, is leading to more interventions by the teacher. So it's really making more, let's say, effective the, the option of the teacher. So more, more targeted interventions, more interventions, and the alerts uh, were helping the educators to decrease their orchestration load because it's assisting sense makers and the diagnosis of the situation, even if not necessarily the educator is considering all the alerts or all the recommendations, but it's making the teacher to be more confident and relaxed that the tool will help uh, them and they can also pay attention to, to other aspects. And of course, the alerts need to be well designed so that they are by themselves not adding to the load because it's more information that is shown to the teacher. So this is a line of work in which we are uh, highly interested as there are more and more complex uh, scenarios that the teachers need to deal with, especially when you think in black classroom, but also hybrid learning scenarios and so on. Um, because the, the well-being facet of all this, or how this is, you know, introducing more stress to educators and so on, is, is another um, uh, aspect of interest for our research. And we are trying to study that um, um, using different instruments, um, self-report is uh, instrument, but also physiological data. We, we are like, just to mention, this is another line of our research in case, you are interested. And I will say a couple of things more, but more like a kind of, of uh, highlights, uh, and because of course we are open for any collaboration, both in terms of research, but also in terms of, you know, helping uh, support um, team practice. Now, if people is eager to use uh, like our tools, we can provide some support. Um, and then I want to mention yeah, different things that we are, uh, researching this these days. So I mentioned the different uh, indicators that can help us understand different facets of well-being of educators. In terms of uh, engagement, we are highly interested in how different login modes, for anonymous identify modes and different combinations and, and options um, and features can facilitate also, um, you know, different kind of, of you know, healthy interactions or, uh, or fruitful interactions, but also inclusion in, in the in collaborative learning activities. Then also social awareness uh, through uh, group participation to what extent different features supporting awareness can also facilitate equal participation or higher level of participation. And then different aspects that relate to playfulness and well-being and ready set. I had an activity again to use the, the pyramid app about engagement that does anonymous more facilitate inclusion and your opinion, but maybe we can and um, we can do it depending on whether you will have uh, questions or not afterwards. So we all decide whether we do this activity or not. I will better finalize and then we can have a discussion now. 
in terms of um, further studying the um, pedagogical impact, uh, we also try to see, I mean, our research questions, we try to see also the effect of the particular task that is proposed. And because it's can depending on the task and other factors that can have different implications in learning gains, both on the individual level and the knowledge building that happen at the collective uh, level. And also how can we support discussions in the classroom after those kind of learning activities has been done. This is what is, uh, what, you know, the, the, the idea, the notion of teacher-led debriefing based on a student's previous uh, options uh, to a proposed task. So uh, many concepts, many ideas. I hope your load is, is not extremely high, um, but I'm, we are having now some, some time to discuss whether it's more of your, of your interest. In this presentation, and the, the perspective in which I've been um, connecting with inclusion, inclusive education is, how technology in the case of collaborative learning can help us in designing and supporting the, the enactment and the orchestration of collaborative learning activities that offer equal opportunities for participation. The, how can learning design technology can support guidance in designing for those kind of learning scenarios? How can collective efforts can benefit designing and sharing uh, of design for learning? Different options to support co-design, not only between teachers, but also other stakeholders such as students, and the relevance of also regulating uh, the learning process um, to accommodate different needs and how technology can also support like uh, um, teacher awareness about what is happening um, and how can the teacher also be supported in their decision makings uh, related to regulation of the orchestration of learning activities. So we talk about learning design, uh, community platforms, analytics layers for learning design, design and redesign, the needs for adaptation, different types of dashboards, teacher dashboards, the concept of orchestration load, and you know, a list that I just went through of different factors affecting engagement and learning gains. Um, because you are uh, especially interested in, in inclusive education and this connect very much with the rights of the child. I thought that you may be interested in also taking a look at this uh, policy report or research for practice policy report by the um, Joint Research Center of the European Commission um, in which I have the opportunity to participate from the perspective of, of education. Um, and it, this is about the artificial intelligence and, and the rights of the, the of the child. And of course, inclusive education is also having an important uh, role in the discussion that you will see in that document. So um, maybe I stop here, but I can go back huh, to to any 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 slide or, or aspect that you would like to discuss now with, with more detail as I was fast in part of the presentation. So now the, um, the, the screen or the micro is yours. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I have many questions and one I didn't so coming see coming was the last one like the title artificial intelligence and right of the children that sounds really paradoxical to me <laughs> but um i don't know uh maybe we can have a discussion or um other people can react either with questions or a reaction or things they got inspired with or question with uh, um, for myself, I, I so I was puzzled by your last uh, slide, but um, I was also wondering a lot about um, uh, how do you feel about the the autonomy of the teachers and the way teachers are co-developing and and. Uh, their professional development together uh, with these tools. Um, do you have any 
observations, any study about that? Um, mm, let's say, not specifically from that perspective, even though uh, we have had colleagues that have done so, uh, have done so by considering our technologies. So they have been like initiatives of professional development, like initiatives where our technologies have been used. I mean, in research led by others have been used trying to understand how they can be helpful uh, in, in terms of supporting this professional development. And, and I, as I mentioned, this is uh, in general where these tools have been, especially the authoring tools have uh, been especially useful uh, because they are, they are uh, providing a level of scaffolding about what is important for a particular uh, pedagogy or pedagogical approach or technique that needs to be applied or, the for example, in Blendy, the recommendations to integrate um, uh, technology from an inclusive perspective and so on. So this is, uh, and once the educators know about the hands, about the techniques, no, then they, they can be, they, unless they need to document and share no, the designs of the, of, because they want just to contribute to open educational resources or participate in a particular community, the, the use of the tools can, is, is like especially, or is having an, an added value, or more value in the processes of professional development. Mm. Because the, the well, please, if you anyone has question, because uh, that's a topic I really love, but I don't want to just have the chance to have a dialogue with Davinia. So if any of you wants to have, ask any questions or propose any reaction, please do. And if you're not comfortable with English, maybe you can write it in French or even say it in French. Okay, well. Maybe people are shy. Uh, so, um, because the, um, uh, a study I published recently showed that uh, the, the way the platform was or not uh, imposed by the local institution would change uh, the way it was adopted and the way teachers would work with it. Um, it's it's like the, the design of the platform is one of many elements that helps for inclusive education. Um, do you, have you noticed any, um, um, things that like go together, like some situation in which some design are better than others or things like that? I didn't mention today because the, the perspective <laughs> was uh, large enough. Mm, but um, of course, we are seeing that um, it still is not the complete answer to the promotion of adoption or so on. But the um, but indeed, uh, following human centered approaches to the design of the technologies and the processes in which you know. That, that need to be considered when introducing the technologies to a context and so on, need to be designed with the stakeholders, no? as you also said no? in, in the answer at the beginning. So the, you need, really need to consider the, the stakeholders in, um, in, 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 the whole, in the whole thing, as I said, not only in the design of the technology, but in the design, in the design of the, on how to introduce it in a, in a context. Um, and this is also for all elements. Eh? We have, for example, even in identifying how to integrate the, the design analytics, the community analytics, the data analytics in our community platforms. Um, we had to run like a number of iterations with, uh, with educators trying to understand what are the, the right analytics that will be helpful to them and that will make sense to them. And for example, we learn how uh, school educators don't like the the kind of visualizations that kind of reflect 
rankings of popularity for the educators. But then we they were recommending us of after a round now that we learned that it was more relevant to, for them is to orientate the data analytics to the designs and not to the people and so on. Even if the people learn, it's very important because we see also being studying how the browsing is many times being done through the people. So they are interested in understanding what a, a specific teacher is doing about the specific topic and they browse in the community platform through the community, they search for the, for the teacher and then they check what the teacher is doing. But in terms of data visualizations and so on, they prefer, they, they have their preferences. Um, if the technology is not really like considering those preferences, then the level of adoption or how they will be used, the tool will be really impacted. So the human centered like, approaches are really key. Uh, and, and of course, they can be commonalities across contexts, but there can be also differences. Eh? We know that there are contexts and differences, also depending on the purposes. It's not the same to have I mean, the platform for open educational resources that's a tool that is for the school, uh, for collaboration at the level of the school. No? So there are also different, different contextual, contextual needs. And then co-design need to be happening with the with the user. Mm. Okay. Um, still saying to participants that if they want to intervene, please they do. So I, I was just puzzled at the end. So maybe it was a teasing, so it worked mm. uh, about that title, artificial intelligence and right of the children. It seems to me like you put two things that have nothing to do with one another. So how is that in any way related? <laughs> and I, I don't know, I don't really understand the question for you. It doesn't... The, the last slide. Yes. Mentioned... Why is not interconnected to you? Because artificial intelligence is being used uh, in different tools, especially. Uh, and even if you may not, I mean, especially when if, if children, no, and children, uh, you know, all age children, teenagers, they are using social networks, and there is a lot of artificial intelligence behind social networks, or there is in the artificial intelligence behind social networks. So this, the way in which artificial intelligence is designed and applied to tools that are being used by minors, um, uh, need to be considered at the policy level. So, and and therefore, it's it's not it's not surprising at all that the impact of artificial, and trying to understand how is the impact of artificial technology, of artificial intelligence in, in children, um, the direct impact or the, or how, or the indirect impact because they're, their their educators, no teachers, parents, they are using tools with artificial intelligence to make decisions that will have an impact on their children. So and it's very relevant to understand the ethical uh, the ethical facets of uh, this, uh, the, this this design of artificial intelligence, um, how they could uh, uh, to different extent have an impact in the in the rights of the child. So I really recommend you to take a look at the at the report if you never thought of of, of that. Yeah, I, I, I never heard of it. So. But uh, mm -hmm. it had to do with responsible design and use of artificial intelligence by children. Yeah. So even if it only had to do with the, with the digital skills. So there is this concept of digital gap and how, uh, and, and it is very connected to inclusive education. No? If people with a disadvantage in disadvantaged con con uh, context uh, we can we at witnessing know how there is a digital gap because they are not they don't have access to, to, to technology and they are not training their digital skills. So in you know with artificial intelligence maybe the this gap will be even more relevant because it will be again about digital gap but also um, making them more vulnerable because artificial intelligence is having an impact in the in human decision making. Um, you know, the recommendations are biasing us, for example, or the polarization that we are experiencing in social media. So all these concepts can have an impact in, in the rise of the, of the child. And this is why the European Union is trying to explore in, and this is a research to, to policy. So it's more a reflective document and the policy will need to be happening at, at that point. 
about that uh, biased uh, things, is it something we also notice in uh, using platforms that are not IA, but still very technologically led? So that if something is uh, might be like self-fulfilling because of the way it's made, that, uh, is it something you, you've observed on, I mean, I don't know, maybe previous version of any platforms you've worked on? I mean, it's not that I'm directly like observing or measuring, but indeed mm, the way in which you vis visualize or organize designs in a community platform, maybe not be driven by recommender systems, but uh, but there is a policy behind, and this is promoting uh, very specific like kinds of, of resources, for example, when we think of platforms for educational resources. So there is a bias in it, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop the recording. Um...